Sandra Carlberg has legendary power. She has won multiple women's world long drive championships and has broken the coveted 400 yard barrier in competition with a 401 yard drive in the 2017 Mile High Showdown. Today we take a look at a more traditional golf swing that can still generate power. If you find any part of this episode intriguing or educational, please help our cause by supporting the channel with a like, comment, or share as we donate proceeds from this channel to the Heal the Hood Foundation to help get low income children into golf. If you want to take it another step, consider joining our growing subscribers as it's free and lets me know there are people out there tired of spiraling in the YouTube rabbit hole of quick fix tips and more interested in learning about cause and effect of the golf swing. But enough of that noise pollution, get ready to witness the great Sandra Carlberg. Welcome back, Lang Golf Academy members and guests. Sandra Carborg on the screen. And the reason I chose this swing is A, because she broke the 400 yard barrier. B, she did it in a way that is not traditional in terms of the long drivers. So let's get right to it. Left side of the screen. Now I had to scour the internet for these videos and I could find these two swings. Now granted, they're not hip height. They haven't been recorded at hip height. So we are gonna lose a little bit of the angles here, but this is the best we can do. And will help me explain a couple things. Right side of the screen, we can see that 90 degree angle again between her spine angle and that lower plane line. And we could see her feet, the center of her heels go right up through where those two meet. So in terms of her centeredness, she is very centered. Centered, very ready to strike this golf ball a lot of knee flexion going on here but she's going to use those powerful legs to drive through this golf ball left side of the screen we see a traditional setup for long drive we can see that golf ball position clearly out in front of her left foot again this is a camera angle issue but I guarantee that golf ball is still out in the left foot and we can tell that by look at that tilt and we can draw the center of our chest straight down through the hands and connecting to the golf ball. So in terms of tilting, relationship and setup, this is spot on, something you need to look for. So if you do have that golf ball way out in front of your left heel, make sure your tilting matches that golf ball. If not, it's gonna be chaotic for you and you're gonna have to manipulate something in your body to make this work. We see that little green line, that is actually where the golf ball is at impact because of the camera shift. So we do lose some lines and I won't focus so much on lines on the left side, but we will focus on tilt and we'll teach you about the tilt relationship with the ball and where your hands need to be before we start the golf ball so with that in mind let me just extend this line as far back as we can see and what we do is we draw a connection between the golf ball to 90 degrees on that angle so we can see it's pretty much on the right shoulder and although these aren't exactly 90 degrees I'm eyeballing it but it's close enough for government work so in terms of her setup with the golf ball her tilting is actually relative to her right shoulder while her hands are connected to her center of her tilt which is perfect right side of the screen let's take this club back halfway and we can see from the here obviously this camera angle is a little higher so we see an exaggerated position here but that club face does veer below the plane line i would imagine if this was hip height that club head would be around there but clearly it goes below and as a result once the body feels the weighting of the club below we can see the counteractive measure the head will actually fall outside that box and creep forward so your body acts on a seesaw the seesaw is determined by the centeredness of your swing so once that club gets below that plane line in a pretty fast motion it's starts picking up some extra weight and that extra weight is counteracted by her upper body leaning forward. So at the top of her swing, she gets her arm plane line correct to where it should be. However, to her new spine angle because that leaning forward, her arm plane line is actually flat compared to that new spine angle. Her club to this position looks good, but she actually goes back a little further and we see that little bit of extra hand motion there. And the key thing is that hand motion is working in a circle in terms of her spine angle. The club does not stick up over here. It is working around her, which is great. We can see that club head face angle is pretty close to her left forearm. So, so far she is ready to go outside of just increasing her tilt angle because of the lower arm position relative to her initial spine angle. Left side of the screen, let's take that club back. This is a more traditional one piece takeaway. We can see the hands and arms aren't really engaged as yet. And we can see that turn. If we look at that triangle, we can see that triangle and the chest is still connected. True one piece takeaway, that club head will be there, but it's still pretty close. Okay, we've cleaned up the lines. Let's move back a little bit further once we get to the same position on the right side of the screen. So we see a nice wide arc, straight left arm, massive turning of the shoulders. We get to the top of the swing here 
and right there is her transition so we'll stop it right here now if we take a look at the rotation of her shoulders versus her arm rotation this is about as perfect as you can get now keep in mind most long drive hitters take that club extremely far back they get their arms and hands more involved her right arm is still connected to her right shoulder and she has pretty limited hip turn so this is where she gets all her power from is that limited hip turn now remember x factor so let's say her hip turn is about 30 degrees there her shoulder turns about 110 so she is carrying roughly 80 degrees and again this is eyeballing it now as she starts her downswing she's going to have a little x factor stretch so her hips slightly open up and her shoulders try and stay delayed so the amount of rotation that your hips can get at the top if you can delay your shoulder rotation you get a thing called x factor stretch so for her she might take her 80 degrees and make it 85 but that is not necessary for you guys and girls at home watching this because you will start doing some damage to your body unless you have an incredible range of motion let's go back to the right side of the screen now now we see that same transition we see the arms pulling back down into it and if you are familiar with these triangles that i draw we have that triangle that connects your elbows to your hands and if we draw a straight line down we can see where the hands are on path to cross in that lower plane line now it all depends on if there's hand manipulation dropping down if they went too far back now for her i don't think she's going to have much hand manipulation because of her t at the top and as a result we see those hands just follow down that line beautifully so there's very little hand manipulation here and arm manipulation because she is set and she just pulls it straight down and she meets her hands where they should have met on a true one piece downswing now something unusual is happening on the right side of the screen and we'll talk about it in a second let's go back to the left side so we're going to see that same shift we're going to get the weight going to the left side which is good she's pushing off that right toe and she stays very toe based and she's carrying a lot of this angle initially so her goal is to try and retain that angle and she does a great job you can see those couple frames there of pulling that club down and making sure it is connected to her chest as close as she can be so i want you guys to imagine a ferris wheel if this is the outside of the ferris wheel and that's the inside of your ferris wheel the power comes from the inside of the ferris wheel and it moves the little carriages on the outside now if you can keep those carriages in relation to the ferris wheel the center of the hub that's how you get true hand speed that can keep up with the turn and that's why she's able to take a more traditional swing and hit it so far okay back to the right side of the screen we can see a lot of crashing from her initial setup so her motion you can see she's on her right toe she actually goes to her left toe and one thing you will see now is because the body upper body lacks room to keep turning so what she has to do now is kind of drop her right shoulder to push that right elbow into that little hole there and now this is very hogan-esque where the right elbow is connected to the right hip as she gets that extra little motion going on here so you can see she runs out of room and she's not able to turn through the golf ball but she has a lot of tilting going on at impact so her shoulders are actually closed to her target line while her hips are opening up now they're not firing open they're not rotating this is more of a drive and you can see how straight that right leg is she's pushing all that energy up through her body to the center of her chest and she's taken her center now and moved it closer to the golf ball so there's her new x right here where those two lines meet run out of room and now i've had to tilt under which is why that golf ball position on the left side of the screen you see so far out on her left foot she needs that extra room to use this excessive tilt and let's focus on that tilting action as she goes into it here comes the tilt one two three we can see that tilting and it's not necessarily her right shoulder tilting it's her left shoulder pulling up so we don't see a lot of spine angle loss in terms of this line here we usually see long drive hitters get both shoulders to tilt the right shoulder tips down and the left shoulder tips up because of this spine angle so if this spine angle looked like this you would definitely see some right shoulder action way down over here so she does a fantastic job of keeping her center of her swing there while she still tilts under this is the frame right before impact so we'll take this frame here let's draw the new shoulder tilt line so we can see we started with an excessive tilt and it's even got more excessive based on that ball position now let's draw the ball position line relative to 90 degrees now let's draw another line and try and intersect her hands on 90 degrees there okay so that's about as close again as government work but what we can do is look at the hand path the hand path will always ride up that and that's just connected to her shoulder tilt but what i want you to focus on is in your swing if you can get this down if you can get your shaft to match where your arm path is just slightly before the golf ball you are retaining all that power and the lag now if you can do that and it's relative to your tilt that means that you are actually carrying 90 degrees 
on where your golf ball is connected to your current tilt. And this is the goal of trying to strike the golf ball with everything that you have. Now you can see she's pretty close to that. So why is this important? Because if you look at the golf ball, if you change the golf ball position to be more centered, she is obviously gonna have a taller spine angle, less tilting, and that's gonna change that 90 degrees. Her 90 degrees is gonna be right about there. So her hands would be at impact and her club head would be at impact. So she won't be able to retain much of her angle. So the goal of this is if you want to increase your distance, you have to increase your tilt and you have to make sure your hand path is riding up that tilt. The only way to make sure that is correct is if the golf ball placement is in the correct position to accomplish that. I can't stress this enough. I say this all the time to every lesson I teach is you have to check your golf ball related to your tilt at impact. So for all those chicken wingers out there that think they need to focus on angle retention and just try and hold that angle as long as you can, I bet you haven't checked your ball position. So make sure you check your ball position and your setup. Now let's just complete this right side of this. We see she stays in her spine angle. Her arms are wrapping around, which is nice. They don't finish as high. And she's wrapping them around because she's trying to throw her right shoulder through and, and release it. You can see that right shoulder is still coming through. And look at this retention of our triangle. So our triangle is still, I know there's a lot of lines here. We draw a big yellow line there. Our triangle is still connected to the center of our chest. And this is something that all long drivers do. Look how far it stays connected. So it's no wonder she could hit a 400 yards when she is connected almost at the completion of her swing. What can we learn from this? Double check your setup, double check your ball position. Hope these lines didn't confuse you. If they did, let me know in the comments below. But I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time. Fair and Green.